Wait, I was thinking um when you're counting down, you're like three, two, one. <laughs> like the bench from BBC. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is I, your pal Al here, along with our bestie the channel, Jack. Hi. Glad to be back. Okay, this is a holiday post-holiday episode. We took a week off for think or Christmas and New Year's. How was all of that for you? Uh, it was a lot of family time. Work. So you could view that as good or bad. I'll let I'll let that be to the viewers to decide. Let me ask the audience. So we went to Universal Studios. We had a good time. Nice. That was fun. We lived our best life. Yeah. What about you? Uh, what did I do? Nothing. Okay. Work. We're here to review episodes five, uh, six and seven of oh, Canada's, that? Canada's Drag Race Season 4. <laughs> Awesome. We're here. Oh, on one of the videos, I had a counter. Now, put the weird here counter right <laughs> on. We're here. We're here. So we're here. We're, we're, here. Here. You know, we're here to discuss. Like, you know, we're just, we're here. You're really Jesus here. Christ. You're <laughs> that was funny. We are talking about episodes six and seven. Obviously, not much happened in season or episode six because it was the lip sync Lollapalooza, baby girl. Lollapalooza. We did have a double elimination, which I just want to say, cut back to the footage because I think it's there. Do you think there's a chance for a double elim? Double elim. Double elim. Nah. She's the psychic type trainer, baby. Uh huh. You what? know what? I just I think I watch enough Drag Race. I know how these things. You're a producer, baby. You are making I, TV magic. I am the producer. Put it in my Twitter tag. Nothing really happened besides, obviously, we knew Nero was going to do good. And Aurora yes. did good. I thought Aurora, Aurora won, to Aurora be honest. Was, Aurora was the winner in my eyes because yeah. uh, Nero just was doing the same thing over thing and over and over again. Every little thing, which wasn't bad. Aurora was giving us, like, leg, air guitar, and... Oh, she was... Oh. Activating, baby. She Activating. Gave it up. Yeah, I was like, I was floored by her. I think after the Lala Perusa, she really cemented herself as a front runner. Oh yeah. With the potential, I think, to win. I thought the other thing that was funny during the Lala Perusa was when Melinda fucking broke her backbone, jumping in and doing that shablam. That was too funny. That was crunchy, girl. I was watching <laughs> Melinda's lip. Okay, Melinda wasn't a bad lip syncer. I will give her that. She was entertaining. She, she was, was frenetic funny, for sure. Right? Yeah, she was definitely unique, different experience, never before seen, <laughs> but crunchy. And sadly, we had to say goodbye to Kim Caboodle and Amy. Obviously, we knew Kim was going to go because Brooke dressed like her. So, obviously. <laughs> If, Stop it! If Brooke dresses like it, because today in today's episode, I was like Brooklyn wearing a wedding dress. Who is a wedding dress? And I thought, oh, Kiki. who? Kiki. Remember Kiki's wa uh, white look she wore in the first episode of like her best drag. I was like, oh my gosh! That was episode six. There was no runway. Obviously, another reason why we didn't cover it because girls are just girling. Episode seven. Now we're in the workroom. Melinda has been feeling her fucking oats, and she thinks her shit don't stink now. She thinks she is it. As far as Melinda's concerned, she is untouchable. <laughs> it's Melinda's Drag Race. Everyone else is just the filler queen. Not Melinda's Drag Race. Cancelled after season one. <laughs> we did have a mini challenge, which was really fun. Again, yeah, very interesting mini challenges. I wish we got more stuff like this on regular Drag Race, where they're like literally doing a full ass like... It's like a half maxi challenge almost. I, know. I thought Melinda's makeup in that challenge looked crazy. Like she didn't put any makeup on. But all, the, all the other girls were like full B, full well, hair. I was, like, I was like, like, is this quick drag? And then I saw the other girls. I'm like, oh. <laughs> no. With that mini challenge, I think we should give it a try. We should put our money where our mouth is and we should give it a go. I know. I have had no prep time on this. <laughs> Neither do the girls. Three, two, one. Summary. The main news story today is a tragedy unfolding in Brazil where the floods 
and landslides are destroying entire towns and communities. Uh, rendering people homeless in minutes. The death toll is steadily rising, as is the number of missing persons. Uh, this is yet another series of disasters struck Brazil, and the current government is examining ways to they can mitigate any future instances of bad weather. Other natural disasters taking place. The situation in Turkey and Syria is getting increasingly grim, with the death toll figures steadily climbing. Oh in, addition, in addition to the fat uh, fatalities, there are around 80,000 people injured. Total, the earthquakes have impacted over 23 million people across the world. People are being encouraged to donate money and resources to the emergency services who are helping in both countries. Well done, Mama. Oh my gosh, she's a teleprompter queen. Okay. That was a lot. I don't know that, was. <laughs> that wasn't as hard as I thought. The, these little YouTube teleprompter challenges need to be a little better. Really? Well, excuse me, you were stuttering all over your words. <laughs> I definitely bubbled. I was don't bubbling. even try to tell me that was easy, okay? <laughs> so, we are getting into our main challenge. Rusical? I guess Rusical. It's not Texas. They didn't say Rusical. They said yeah. Musical. They which said was weird. The unauthorized Brooklyn Heights musical, which I'm like, that's gonna What'd be boring. Think? What'd you think of it? These girls didn't know the fucking words to any of the lip syncs. Melinda, not Melinda. Uh, oh my gosh, we'll get to Melinda. But <laughs> Kiki Ko, Denim, didn't know the words, didn't know the steps, and I'm just like, oh. Bottoms. I could tell right away. Yeah. Melinda totally looked like Baby Jane. I was like, what is Alaska doing here as Baby Jane? This is unhinged craziness. <laughs> I don't really I don't really have many words to describe how I feel about <laughs> the musical. It was one of the musicals of all time. Let's just say that. I was surprised Venus was at the top. Spoiler. Because she... Oh, it was boring, though. And she was just like... You it know. was kind of boring. Yeah, it was kind of boring. I, mean, <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't gagging for anybody except for Aurora. Aurora did so good. And, you know, near enough did good, kind of. Like, she was fine. She was, it was fine. Okay. I love the part where, though, where, like, the editors are, like, being shady and being, and when Brooke's like, we kind of already saw this last week and they just did side by side of her doing it right then to last week. I was gagged. I was living. Literally, I told you, I'm like, she's doing the same thing over and over again. <laughs> again, not bad, but... I mean, if you're good at it, like, you're good at it. What else can you do successfully? Quickly. quickly. But yeah, overall, the I thought it was kind of boring. Brad narrating was, I guess, okay. I thought, okay, at one point, Brad sounded like Jimbo at one point. <laughs> and then Brad, Brad sounded like Candy Mew or something. He sounded like a couple of other drag queens. I'm like, wait, did they get, like... Queens to return to voice over this? That would have been good. I thought it was weird that they wanted them to paint like a white girl. And overall, like Aurora and Nira did the best, probably. I thought Melinda did good too. If I, I had to pick another person for the top. Yeah, I think Melinda's a fair pick there. It's Melinda's progression in this competition so far, I think, is definitely one of the most galvanizing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can see that because, you know, first day walking in that workroom with that rainbow jumpsuit, we were both like, huh. no, no mama. Girl. <laughs> and now she's in top five. Like, it's just like a Cameron Michaels almost. Luann the Countess was the guest judge Ooh. this week. Countess Luann, or as I like to say, countless. <laughs> Do you watch Real Housewives? I used to. Oh, so you know who she was and you know all oh, about yeah. her? Oh, yeah. I love Luann, Dorinda, Doree. Oh my God. I live Bethany. Oh my God. I love Bethany. I, yeah, I know Bethany just from all the other stuff she does, but I never watch Housewife. So, all right, let's get to the runway. Category is something wedding. What's the category? It's, it's like bridesmaid. First on the runway, we have Miss Aurora Matrix. What'd you think about this look, baby girl? I think this was a little bit different for Aurora. I mean, it, it's still different. giving Aurora, right? Like, it, I think she's done a really good job with brand, switching it up, but still keeping it uniquely her. I think this is one of those runways where she did that really well. The makeup is really good. I like the colors implemented in this and the wig is fun. Like, I, I think it's a, overall a really fun look. 
Next to the runway, we have Denim. I this love this my favorite look. of the night. Yeah, it's so good. Again, showcases how unique Denim's point of view is. Just the garter belts going all the way up her body. And I love this color scheme that she has going on. It's very like spring, but then it has like the colder elements with pastel the blue. Yeah, very pastel. And the mug is always right. Got a silhouette. Bride, giving bridesmaid. Got a silhouette. This is so good. Yeah, like you said, and like how Brad said, like, you know, she might hear a thing and she won't even do what you think of. She won't even do the next oh. thing that you'll think of. She'll do something totally random that fits it perfectly. And I love that. Yeah, they say girls, is it girls or boys go to Jupiter to get more stupider. But Denim goes all the way <laughs> to Uranus. Ooh. Okay. And then she comes back and says, this is what I got. This is what I colonized. <laughs> Next to the runway, we have Miss Kiki Ko and choices. Choices. A dress. A dress. Nice dress. I think that, I, why old person makeup? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Why? It, it, she only did her face. She didn't do like her chest, make it look no. wrinkly or. No. What? Uh, I She deserved to go home for this. I, I feel. No, I mean, the dress. The, the garment itself was like really, really good. The hair is really nice. It's just that makeup was a choice. Like, why? But it complete to me, the makeup completely throws the look because yeah. I I can look at the dress on its own and be like, that's a really beautiful dress. But the way she sold it with the makeup and her runway performance, I was like, she might have she could have been wearing a diaper and it wouldn't have made <laughs> a difference. Okay, the dress is too young looking. Oh well, yeah, to go with, and maybe that was the thought behind it. Maybe that's what she was thinking. Next to the runway, we have Miss Melinda Verga. What do you think of Melinda? <laughs> I mean... Really? It's no, it's good. I like it, Oh, right? okay. Yeah, I loved yeah. it. No, I was like... It, it's the like props. It's like a wild war or something. Um, this is fun. I, the judges calling it... Didn't they call it like simple or something? Or off the rack? I don't know. I, I was like, okay, yeah. that's kind of uncanny. Like, I thought she styled the look really well and her makeup looks pretty good. Like, Not mad about it. I literally thought she thought that she's like, I'm going to make this makeup look crazy. And it's probably the best she's looked so far. <laughs> <laughs> literally, the makeup was so good. I was like, okay, I could actually see some features. They're highlighted yes. well. You got the cheeks out. Okay. Yes. Yeah, as Brooklyn was saying, like, you know, like, you're far in the competition, girl. You better step it up with the looks. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, at least she said something. Next to the runway, we have Miss Nira Nuff, which surprised me again. Different. For Nira. Very different. This is definitely matronly and not sluty. <laughs> <laughs> so good job. Maybe this isn't the, the the moment, but what is what are your thoughts of Nira so far, like to this point in the competition? Oh, I think Nira's giving drama and I like that. But it's yes. a confessional drama. It's not like to the girls drama. You didn't do the split. Right, that's true. So it's like there I has been a little bit with Amy on say Chanel. That was that was an iconic moment. Yeah, uh, I will look back at in the future and be like, this is this is like peak drag race. <laughs> but I mean, she's kind of just blending in. Like I don't think okay. she's not going to go the far. At least I got a positive fucking critique. But you know what? I, I thought Kiki that. was going to go far. So who knows? And here we have Melinda top five. For me to be used week after week after week after week as a fucking punching bag. <laughs> so, you know, you never you never know what to expect at this point. Anyway, on the runway look category though, it's, it's a long dress. So like bridesmaid, I feel like, I don't think bridesmaids wear dresses like that. It's no, almost this is like... bride, like bride of the Oompa Loompas. I see that, yes. Oompa Loompa realness, baby girl. Whoa. Whoa. Yes. Okay. This is camp though. Cute. This is giving me very like classic era. Like I'm going for a stroll in the park. Let's go to the derby. It's not really giving bridesmaids yeah. though. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Thank you. Yeah. So I mean, it's still nice. And last but not least, we have Venus, and I got opinions. I got opinions. I feel like she's not doing drag. I think she's doing boy dressing up as. Okay, is this problematic? This is problematic. No, okay, well, say it and I'll tell you. Well, like I just feel like she's not trying to do drag. She's just trying to do runway. Maybe that's more what I'm saying. Oh, like you're thinking she's more. She's looking at it more like a model. Yeah, because drag queen. Her it looks like she's wearing zero makeup on her face, 
And like, I, this is the first time it looks like she's kind of padded or corseted. And I'm just like, okay, this is better. But it's more like modelly versus draggy to me. I think all drag is valid. <laughs> oh, get me canceled. Get me canceled. Let's go. But I can, I can see your critique here. I do agree with the makeup. I wish that her wig or whatever that is is not completely covering her face. I, I noticed shit. that a lot of the time I couldn't see half her face. Give us like a green lip or Ooh, like yeah. Like I want to see something kind of pop because the top half of this look is really interesting, right? I like the hair and I like this like collar moment. Why? Where's the where the flower collar go to the rest of the look? Yeah, it doesn't the once you get down below that, it just it's super boring. Again, I don't know where I got this shirt, but you know, could I ever? Probably not. But I don't know. Something with her, I, I'm not connecting with her at all. Like when she talks, I get annoyed. <laughs> like I'm, I don't know how to feel right now because and maybe that's why I didn't like her performance because it was just her like pretending to talk and like they just said don't move yeah. around. Like when they were doing like their little rehearsal, you the guys, did. the guys like don't move around. You're selling the voice. You're selling the look, the emotion. And of course, she's. It's like, okay, we get it. We get it. I get it. I get it. This is a me problem. I end, I know. And with that, let's just move on. <laughs> Cut no. to the judges' critiques, tops and bottoms. Of course, we're going to have Aurora. I must call her Chanel. Nira at the top. And then I was like, who are they going to put there? They have to put Melinda up there because they love Melinda. But no, they put this girl up there her up there because they were so gagged at this runway and i'm just like am i watching the same show what is going on here you know what have your moment <laughs> this is it's your yours. moment you want it? <laughs> it's your moment take it well were you not shocked you, you thought melinda deserved to be in the bottom i thought melinda was just like meh this week really i i did not like her performance in the Rizzo Bowl. The bottoms were Melinda, Kiki, and Dana. When I'm, I was like, Kiki cannot go. Kiki is the front runner in my eyes. But then as soon as she said, I've been to the bottom three times, I'm just like, oh. Right. Never mind. You like, yeah, I know. Cause she's been saved so many times. Yeah. I've never had the lip sync. Going back, I with Melinda in the bottom three, I was like, well, they're, they're just gonna keep her safe. Because at this point, at this point, they're telling a story of a queen <laughs> who came in lost and her had, mind <laughs> yeah like literally lost her mind and then somehow made it like almost all the way to the end so they're keeping that story we uh, get this lip sync which i was in my bed watching this i fell asleep it was a terrible lip sync it was a bad lip sync it was a bad song when the lip syncs this season have been like really volatile like there will be a really good one and then there'll be a really bad one uh and there's been a lot more bad ones i think well, with that said, Kiki had this essay away. I was very shocked. But, you know, that's okay, because she says she gets down by her boyfriend every single day. So, <laughs> oh my God, I'm really scared right now. <laughs> well, that was out of nowhere. Aurora being like, yeah, I'm not really sexual. I'm not really, like, sexy. I don't really hook up. And then Kiki... I get pounded daily. Like, I get it. I want it. I was just going to say, the bottom three wasn't surprising. And once I saw who was lip syncing, I'm like, well, they're going to keep down. Venom just has more uniqueness than Kiki. And they're like kind of on the same page as fashion. It's like either or. Denim is falling flat on these musical challenges. And it's been falling flat a lot. And it's all disappointing. Stuff. I yeah. want to see more because we've seen what she can do. But it's just been like a little tease. We didn't talk about how Brooklyn. Brooklyn looked amazing this episode in her little wedding gown. I saw her post on when I always see her post the day before the episode goes up. And I saw this on Instagram. I was like, oh my God, what is happening this week? This is an amazing <laughs> look. Is Brooklyn actually getting married? No, just uh, a little conceited. Thank so. you everyone for being here. Thank you, Jack, for joining me. Thank you as always. I uh, will catch everyone in the next episode. Until then, peace out. Toodles. Bye. Ah.